Welcome back to another episode of Fig and Farm at Home, where we design happy living. I'm so glad you're joining me in this conversation today because we are diving into a three-part series all about where to start. And if we think about that question being on a continuum, I have a feeling that any number of you listening might land somewhere on that continuum. Some of you are stuck in the very beginning, in the the not movement part, the stuckness part, the limited belief that is keeping you from action. Some of you are at the part where you're thinking, I'm ready for action, but I just don't know. Do I paint the walls first? Do I buy the couch first? Do I start in that room or this room over here? Do I get rid of everything? Do I keep it all? And some of you have already started. You are going like gangbusters and now you're standing there with your hands thrown in the air thinking, ah, I need a little bit more guidance and I don't quite know what to do to tie it all together. Where are you? Are you on that continuum? I have a feeling you are and I'm just curious which part of it it is that you're landing in. We're going to be addressing all three over the next three weeks and I do want you to make sure that you've hit subscribe so you don't miss it because if you're at the very beginning in the in the stuckness part chances are you're going to go through stage two and three. And if you are in stage two, guess what? You're probably going to go to stage three. And if you're at stage three, you are probably going to want to know how I can help you. (laughs) And I'm here for all of that. But each, each week I am going to provide resources for you so that you can get out of whatever it is that is holding you back right there in that space and into movement and into moving your design needle forward wherever it is you're moving it to. I want to encourage you to, to make sure that you're part of the Facebook community. That is an extension of what's happening here on the podcast. So conversations are happening all the time. We have a monthly theme and I do quick tips on Mondays and a quick little teaching that goes along with it or something supportive, a blog post, a podcast episode, something that supports that theme. And then there's lots of engagement with the women who are in there in the same spots you are asking questions, giving encouragement, giving advice, and it is a beautiful community in development. And I want you to be a part of it. In the show notes, you will find how to get to that community and be a part of that. But I also want to say too, a very big thank you to those of you who have been around for a while, who have been listening, taking time out of your busy summer schedules and listening to the podcast. I know that you have a lot of things going on. I know that you have baseball games. I know that you have swim lessons. I know that you have date nights. I know that life is busy. And I know that how we, t- how we spend our time is a matter of choice. And I appreciate you choosing to spend time with me. I appreciate it when you take the time to hit subscribe. And I appreciate it when you take the time to leave a review. Those mean the world to me because it's you who I create the content for. It's you who I hear from, I listen to, and it is, it is you who I see in the background when I'm creating the podcast, when I'm writing down the outline for what it is I want to share with you. It's your name that pops up, and it's your question that pops up and in, encourages me to continue creating. So thank you so much. And if you have been hanging out with me for three or more times, you are my girl. And if you have not left a review yet, would you do me the honor of leaving a review, letting me know what it is you've learned from the podcast, what it is that has inspired you to keep coming back time and time again, and what action you've taken. That, of course, is what I want to know. All right, are we ready to get started in literally where to start? Let's do it because some, so many of you have so many questions and I want to give you all the tools, all the encouragement to get started. Enjoy today's show. We grew up with the phrase, home is where the heart is, but our culture has shifted and now the message is, home should be Pinterest perfect. I'm calling BS on that message. Home, it's not about the stuff, it's about the story. And whether you know it or not, your home is a reflection of you and is already saying something. So what is it that you want it to say? Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating, Goodwill shopping budget. And I learned a few things along the way, like how to bring big style to your home without breaking the bank. 
and I'm sharing it all with you. Tips, tricks, decor, and design advice so you can learn to tell your story with your style. Where you can start living free from the Pinterest perfect trap and start living a life of intention. Welcome to Fig and Farm at Home, where we design happy living and where it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. Brainstorming with someone when they're in pursuit of a dream is one of my very favorite things to do. And I didn't realize that it was one of my favorite things to do until it has been been happening more and more and more and more. I think sometimes as the podcast host, and it's still not being something that a whole lot of people do, I think that is setting a an example for others who might want to take a leap and who might want to take a jump towards whatever dream it is they're dreaming. And recently I had the privilege of having a conversation with someone who is very happily in their career and wanting to branch out and do something a little different. It's been a passion of his, and he was asking me all the questions. How do you manage your time? How do you do make this decision? How do you get past the fear of even starting? And that's where we landed in most of our conversation, and it's some place where we're landing today. How do you get past the fear of even starting? Because even though when we were talking with him about starting this side hustle and making space for it and working past these ideas of fear for him and moving into action, a lot of that is translatable to what's happening in your own home. I've seen it time and time again. It doesn't look the same necessarily, but there are elements of sameness. And here's what I mean. As I was encouraging him to just start. What's the worst that can happen? And he would counter it, but what if, but what if, but what if? And we could but what if the issue until we are blue in the face. We could but if the issue until we are 92. We could but if the issue until we look back when we were 92 and realized we should have taken the leap when we had the chance. We should have taken the leap when we had that courage. We should have taken the leap when that little slice of encouragement was right there standing before us. We could but if ourselves into inaction until the end of time. And that's always a choice. It's always a choice. Whether it's in pursuit of a dream or making change in your home. We could always but if our way into inaction. And that's where we're starting today in this Where Do I Start series. Those of us who have stayed stuck in the inaction, those of us who are bound to the ideas that are really tethered to the but ifs, the what ifs, the I don't think I cans, that's where we're starting today. And all of these are coming from experience, experience either working past it myself or helping a client work past it for themselves. And moving into the first step, the very first step. We're going to address them all and we're going to save the one that is most common for last. It is going to be no surprise to you what it is. We're going to address them all, but the reality is when you are stuck in inaction, the question here is not what color do I paint my walls? The question here is not do I buy the couch first or the armchair first? The question here is not what room do I start in or how do I hang my art or do I put a bookshelf here in the corner or over there by the window? Those are not the questions. The questions that we are asking ourselves, the real question, what is the limiting belief holding me back? I live in a 1980s builder grade home, so there's nothing I can do. Or I rent my home. I don't own it, so there's nothing I can do. I have too much stuff, and I am drowning in stuff, and no one is in my home to support me getting rid of the stuff, so there's nothing I can do. Or I don't really know what I want. I just know I want change, so I'm just going to sit in inaction. Or my husband and I don't agree on anything. We don't agree on any of the styles, so I'm just going to cave to what it is he wants and there's nothing I can do. Do, Are you getting the repeated pattern here? The stuckness is this idea of there's nothing I can do so I'm not going to move forward. When there's actually realistically speaking a whole heck of a lot of things you can do if we know where to start. 
the question really to ask yourself out of all of these ideas and scenarios is, is it really that you don't know how to start or is there something that is keeping you from starting? Oftentimes that something that is keeping you tethered is a misperception, is maybe not enough knowledge, is lack of communication. Let me give you a few examples. When I hear people say their kids are going to make everything messy or they're going to ruin things, what I'm, what I'm really hearing is the boundaries that need to be in place are not in place. Because you can cohabitate with, and I'm air quoting, nice things with children. There have been so many times when I have seen transformation happen in someone's home and the kids are the ones who are ooing and eyeing and thanking. They're the ones who are in appreciation of, of course the parents are too, but the kiddo's reaction has been so surprising to me. And that is a misperception that they won't appreciate nice things. Oftentimes they are the ones who notice and take note of Jimmy's house, Susan's house, Sarah's house, and what it looks and feels like, there's a feeling there. And sometimes, of course, that feeling isn't the look. It is the way that Jimmy's dad interacts with the kids or the way that Susan's mom always makes a homemade meal or something like that. But assuming that the kiddos won't appreciate a nice feeling or thing in a home is just that. It is an assumption having that conversation, if you know that, for example, they appreciate Jimmy's house, they love spending time there, you can ask them, what is it? What is it about Jimmy's house that makes you excited to go over there? Of course, we know you love Jimmy, but what is it about being in his space that makes you want to go there rather than here? What is it? And you might be surprised at the answer. But you won't know until you ask. And the same thing goes for perceptions around marrying your style with your husband's style. Oftentimes that will keep people back and stuck in indecision or inaction when it comes to creating a home that they love. They assume that all of the treasures that their husband's collected over the years or the tchotchkes handed down from generation to generation or antlers that are on display are memorabilia that is significant enough to take up space within within your home. And that could be driving you bonkers. But have you asked, is this really what you want? Um, what are the goals that you have for our space? And what are the ways that you want our story to be reflected here? And have you communicated, this is not really my story, these dead animals hanging on the wall. <laughs> this is your story. Is there a space where we can put this so that it is more your space rather than in a collective living room area? Have you had those conversations? You might be completely shocked by responses. You might be shocked in knowing, you know what? Actually, I love it, but I don't actually need the antler collection hanging in the living room. I am okay with it being in my office. I am okay with it being in the garage. I'm okay. Can we have one in the bedroom? You might be surprised at the response. Going into and making um, assumptions and presumptions about what another person that you share your space with wants is going to lead to frustration and oftentimes disappointment. And oftentimes, more often than I care to share or admit, lead to inaction and sometimes bitterness. When you are stuck in inaction because you have too much stuff and you don't know how to get started eliminating, or you have too much furniture and you don't know quite where to place it, or you have furniture that you're not a fan of and you don't know how to paint it, but you know you want to paint it. Sometimes the inaction is laced in lack of knowledge. And there are so many resources available to help you know and to help you get started with how to declutter, for example. Steps for decluttering successfully and keeping the clutter out. How to paint furniture, where you can, and how to do it successfully so it doesn't look like your five-year-old grabbed a hold of the paintbrush. 
when you're not entirely sure of the skill that you need in order to get the job done, there are resources available. There are so many resources available. And if you know someone firsthand, I often suggest talking to that person to see if you can pick their brain. Kind of like that conversation I had with my friend. He was picking my brain because he knew that I had some experience with running a business that was created after making a leap of faith. He was trying to navigate all these avenues of time management and stepping away from fear or even perception from the people around you. He was trying to manage and navigate all of those things that I'd already walked through. And if you surround yourself with people who are able to do the same thing, maybe you know someone who just got done decluttering their home and it looks amazing. Ask them, what were the steps that you took? Where would you start? What did you do to start? What would you suggest? Do you want to help? Surrounding yourself with people who are knowledgeable, who are one step ahead of you, two steps ahead of you, doesn't always have to cost a lot. We, of course, know that there are resources available at our fingertips 24-7, YouTube, blogs, podcasts, all the things that are readily available. And sometimes we don't have time to sit and watch a video. And that's what podcasts are for. We know that you run errands. We know that you're extremely busy. We know that you are constantly chauffeuring kids to and from places and sitting in the parking lot waiting for their practices to be done. Pop in a podcast. See if you can find someone who's teaching you how to paint furniture, if that is a skill that you're missing in order to get started. When you have constraints and you don't start because you rent or you own a home that was built decades ago, and that is the bondage that is keeping you stuck, try thinking about the flip side of it. Renting, for example, how lucky are you that you don't have to choose the color palette of the walls? It's chosen for you. Oftentimes, those are neutral. A lot of times, those are white. What can you do? What kind of choices can you make to play with the things that you're bringing in using white as a negative space that complements all of the colors you're bringing in on your bookshelves and on your couch and in your textiles. There are so many wonderful things like peel and stick wallpaper that you can bring in to create space that is unique and cozy and personal and doesn't entirely cost a lot. When you have architectural details like homes built in the 80s can make over time that will accommodate style, but staying stuck in that is going to lead to to continued frustration and overwhelm when you think that you need to tackle it all at one time or wait until you have the $150,000 to do an entire remodel, floor to finish. But what happens if you tackle one wall at a time, one small room at a time, one room where you're spending most of your time in and moving on to the next and to the next and to the next. What happens if you tackle it one project at a time, changing out hardware, changing out molding, saving for the flooring? That specific issue is not necessarily just saved for when you have a home that's built decades ago. Oftentimes when you have the approach or the mindset that I'm not going to make any changes to this space because there's so many that need to be made, I don't even want to start. That's not just a budget issue, that is a overwhelm issue. And when you can start with one thing at a time, learning what your aesthetic is, knowing what the vision is, knowing what budget can allow to make some of the changes that you have right now today, oftentimes that can be avoided when you know what the end goal is and you can reverse engineer in order to accomplish that goal. But if we approach it like, I have an elephant that I'm going to eat and instead of taking one bite at a time, you want to swallow the whole thing, that overwhelm can cause inaction and lead to inaction. So addressing that and understanding that and figuring out or getting the idea of what is the end goal and what is the first step I'm going to take in order to reach that end goal. When you have that in mind, it can lead to action. So this leads me to the most 
common reason I hear for people, why people stay stuck in inaction. It's not because they don't really know where to start. It's not because they don't have the same style as their husband. It's not because they are really afraid of their kids ruining everything. The most common reason I hear is that they think it costs too much money. And what I want to say to that is it can. It can. It absolutely can if your approach is eating the entire elephant all at once. If your approach is going out there and furnishing and refurnishing and painting and building what you want to build and taking down walls and putting up walls and taking out flooring and putting in flooring and getting new carpets and doing all the things. If your approach is to do it all, all at one time, then yes, absolutely. It is going to take a lifetime for you to get that windfall, to get that money in order to make those changes happen. And we're going to be in that same spot as that 92 year old that we talked about at the beginning, who has been thinking, what if, what if, what if, and you are stuck in your what ifs for 92 years. But what if, what if you knew how to go about making those changes so that you're not stretching your money at the end of the month? What if you knew how to make the changes that allowed you to create a space and a home that looked and felt just like you? That when your friends walked into your home, they thought, oh my gosh, this is so incredibly you. This has your personality written all over it. I can see you in the walls, in the shelves, in the tchotchkes that are here, in the table. I can see you in all the spaces. What if you knew how to do that? that would be mind blowing, right? And this isn't a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of strategy. And that strategy can be learned. It absolutely can be learned. One of the things I want you to think about as we approach this strategy, especially as we move forward to the next couple of weeks is if you have an idea of what it is you want your home to look and feel like you have that end goal in mind, How can we reverse engineer it so that we know which step to take first and then second and then third and then fourth? And not only do we know which steps to take first, second, third, and fourth, but we know which big impact steps to take first and second and third and fourth. Knowing the biggest impact is just as important as knowing which step to take. Knowing how much money you you need in order to make step one and step two is important. But knowing how much you have today is incredibly important. Do you have 50 bucks? Awesome. We have a strategy for that. Do you have 300 bucks? Great. We have a strategy for that. Do you have 5,000? Awesome. That's more money than I know what to do with at the moment. (laughs) The point is it doesn't take a lot in order to make change happen when we are taking strategic steps, when we are making strategic movements in creating the home that we love and we want. So here is your assignment. If you are stuck in inaction for any of the number of reasons, but especially including budget, I want you to think about and ask yourself this question. What really is the thing that is holding you back? What is it? And I want you to get out a paper and I want you to write it down. And I want you to write down every single thing that you can think of. Whatever it is you think about, whatever comes to mind, jot it down. I want you to start by asking yourself the first question. What is it that is making it so that I am, I I know I want the change in my home, but I'm not doing anything in order to move towards that change. Some of you don't want the change. And if you don't want it, awesome. Fantastic. That's totally fine. But if you want the change and you're not doing anything to make that change happen, what is it keeping you stuck? Ask yourself that and then ask yourself the next question. It's going to vary depending on what you said in the first question, right? If it is that you don't think that you have enough money, maybe ask yourself, well, how much do I have to start? Knowing how much you have to start right now is a good thing. Knowing if you realistically have $50 or if you realistically have $350 is a good thing. And then maybe ask yourself another question. Is there a way for me to save 20 bucks a month, 70 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month? for a little bit of time. Understanding and appreciating a strategy towards that is going to be helpful as we learn which big impact steps we're going to take first and second and third in order to reach your end goal. But knowing your end goal is super important. Knowing your end goal is critical before you even start making a plan. We're going to talk about that next week. 
But here's what I want you to do. You're asking yourself those questions. You're sitting with yourself and, and wrestling with the idea of why am I not having a home I love? Do, do I love it? First of all, ask yourself that. Do I love it? Why not? What kinds of changes do I think might need to happen in order to make it something I really love and appreciate and that really reflects my style and is a home that serves me and my family and all the things. And then I want you to go get two of my free resources. The first one is five changes you can make this weekend in order to elevate the look of your home. They are all under $100, all of them. Some of them are even free. So those are a few of the things that you could do. You could make change. And once you start making just even one teeny tiny little change, it's going to kind of be like a domino. You might see, oh my gosh, I made that one little change and I am kind of excited about trying another one. I'm kind of excited about trying change two or change three. I want you to go and download that. That is, it's called um, five home secrets. And these are the five things I would tell every home staging client, every every decorating client. These are the five things we need to make sure we do in order to elevate the look and the feel of your home. All of them, all of them are under $100. But then I want you to go and download or go and get access to my free five day mini course that is back to basics. And this just gives you a general over overview, a general idea of where we're even going to start. The five things that we need to think about as we start moving forward, as we start creating that big picture vision, as we start thinking about that, these are the five things we're going to think about. And it gives you just a little bit of just a peekaboo of the five concepts we're going to really dive into. Something that you can wrap your brain around so that you know where we can start putting our energy, not our money, just our energy, our mental energy. That Both of these links are going to be in the show notes, and I want you to go and and make sure that you grab those. Those are both free, and the Back to the Basics um, free five-day mini course is going to be delivered to you. Both of them will be delivered to you via email, but the Back to Basics is going to be delivered to you daily for five days, so you won't be overwhelmed with all of the information, even though it's just a -a peekaboo. Okay, and then your next assignment. Are you ready? hit subscribe. Make sure you come back next week because we're going to be diving in just a little bit more about what you can do after you've gotten past that idea of that block that has been keeping you stuck. You're ready for action. You want to have some action. We're going to dive into knowing what to do next. So come back next week. All right. I'll see you then.